guys, welcome to another episode of Behind the Curve. I'm Jay, this is Clearly Bad, and we're going to be talking about games that you've probably already played, maybe even heard about, but I'm just now getting around to it, so why not? Alright, so today we're going to be talking about Shovel Knight for the Nintendo Switch. Big shout out to John McClure on Twitter, who sent us a big request to see if we can review this game. Shovel Knight is a 2D side-scroller action platformer. It was initially released June 2014 on PC, Nintendo 3DS, and Nintendo Wii U. On September 2014, it was released on PS3, PS4, PS Vita, and Xbox One. Also on Amazon Fire TV in October 2015, and on March 2017, it launched with a Switch. Today, we're specifically going to be talking about Shovel Knight on the Nintendo Switch, the Treasure Trove Edition, which comes with all of the DLC. Prior to the game adventure, Shovel Knight and Shield Knight journeyed across the world alongside one another, but while exploring the Tower of Fate, a cursed amulet takes over Shield Knight and leaves Shovel Knight stranded outside the sealed tower. Grieving for his beloved, Shovel Knight gives up adventuring and goes into self-imposed exile. During his absence, the Enchantress rises to power, spreading evil across the land. Upon hearing that the Enchantress has unsealed the Tower of Fate, Shovel Knight begins the journey back to it, hoping to find and rescue Shield Knight. In order to do so, Shovel Knight must fight the members of the Order of No Quarter, while have been dispatched by the Enchantress to impede him. Alright, so, here's my review for Shovel Knight, especially on the Nintendo Switch. The things you gotta consider is Shovel Knight specifically on its own before the Nintendo Switch. It is a brilliant, beautiful game. There's a lot of really cool stuff for it. In fact, if you really think about it, the game is kind of its own awesome entity, but made with special things from our past. It being a 2D side-scroller, it, it, it is just screams an NES game or an SNES game. For me specifically, Super Nintendo was my jam. And this is where this game really lives. It's somewhere between Mario and Zelda. The platform levels itself lives in this world of Mario where you're side-scrolling and you're jumping on bad guys, but you have to drop your shovel and bing, bing, bing across them. Missing holes and spikes coming around the corner and all of that cool stuff. This game plays really well, but then it also gives you moments in towns where you can communicate with people back and forth, collect items, buy things, earn treasure, get more unique items to do more unique things, to collect more treasure, to collect more things, which then unlocks more bosses and more levels and just makes really, really fun times. And each boss has its own challenging kind of setup, a little bit like Bowser, but a lot more like Ganondorf and all of his minions. So this really does play in between two of my favorite games that I grew up with, Zelda and Mario. This game lives in that world. That being said, this is still a game of the future. This game saves really well, it plays really well, it's super smooth, and I think the memory would just be a little bit past what our machines could handle back in the day of the Super Nintendo times. Sega and Super Nintendo themselves. So yeah, we're kind of found playing the game itself in the future, but it answers this big question. Is nostalgia too far? No, this game is awesome. This game is so much fun. It, it, it really plays out really, really well for being an older style game. It plays on those little nostalgia ticks that we love so much. However, it plays today so well. Now, that being said, it, it, is, a, it is a good game with a really fun story. Let's move on to the Nintendo Switch portion. This game has found its home, okay? This plays on an Amazon Fire TV, a PS Vita, PS3, Xbox One, all that stuff, PC. It is chump change compared to when it got a launch on the Nintendo Switch. Now you ask yourself, why? What's the difference? Well, first of all, the multiplayer is so much more smooth and natural. It exploits the Switch's beauty and the fact that you can just pop those controllers sideways and just play along. You don't have to have a full $60 Xbox One controller to play with your friends. You can just boop play it sideways. This game plays out so well. There's amiibo support to it. The game is a perfect game to be able to either play on the road or play on the TV. It just works so well as something between a Game Boy game and a TV console NES classic type of game. However, it finds itself on the Switch. So, those are a lot of the ups. 
I love it on the Switch. I love the style of the game itself. I love everything about it. There are a few little frustrations. The fact that this is one of those games that you are going to be a hardcore gamer for. Some of the structure in itself is pretty obvious. Whenever you're playing through a level, you kind of find yourself finding a little bit of a gimmick. It lets you explore it a little bit in one section. Then you have to move on and it progressively gets harder and harder and harder until you find that one spot that you're going to repeatedly die like a million times over before you have to kind of go back and play it again and again and again. So then you can kind of get through the level. And that's, that's what each level has, its own little gimmick. And then you finally run into a boss who has their own gimmick that you have to fight off with. Specifically, my favorite, semi spoiler free i gotta say specter knight has got to be the hardest boss to beat in the game so it plays out very very well but it is a very difficult level which then for being my style of gaming where i like to play things at least once i don't really have the encouragement to go back and replay each level i just have one level that i go back to and i keep collecting treasure through and through and through that level to be able to afford buying all the cool upgrades because you can get a lot of sweet upgrades on armor, on your shovel, you can buy a lot of items. There's just a lot that this game has to explore. And each item opens up a new area and gives you a lot of new abilities to gain more treasure in different levels. And that is where the replay value is. And if you're one of those hardcore gamers that love hard games and harder levels, this is going to be the game for you. Uh, it reminds me so much of Super Mario World back in the day when I was playing it because, you know, you, you have that first level that you know and you just master that level so then you can gain as many coins or lives or one-ups as you want and you know how to go back and play that to be able to get through the rest of the game with the harder parts. That's where the replayability lies. However, for me, I'm a simple gamer so I don't really have the encouragement to replay and replay and replay. That being said, I still think there's a lot of merit and value to the people who really enjoy this. So check out this game if you get a chance because it is so much fun. And on the Nintendo Switch, it just lives and breathes naturally. The game's only $25. The rating system that we normally use is buy, try, deny. Um, I'm going to throw in there possibly rent. Um, unfortunately, though, if you look at those four things, there's really only a couple of options. You can buy the game, you can just skip the game, you can borrow the game from a friend, but you can't really try it out, like rent it, or or you can't really, um, there's really not a lot of other options for this game because it's not a physical copy. This is a digital game only. However, it is $25 and is worth every single penny. So give it a shot buy this game. If you have a Nintendo Switch, this should be one of the first things in your library next to Breath of the Wild. Now, how would I score this game? Well, honestly, I'm going to score it a 4.5 out of 5 because this game sells itself. It is so good. There are moments of frustration where I've screamed and wanted to pull my hair out and have kind of made me want to walk away from it. But it's not going to be Zelda, Breath of the Wild, or Resident Evil 7, or any of those games that I've given, like, max scores at. It's an amazing game. However, it's got its limits. So, highly recommend check this game out, guys. Give it a shot. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Hey, guys, if you enjoyed the video, please share with friends. Subscribe. You'll see more stuff like this every day. Also, hit me up on Facebook, Twitter all those pages so you can see what I'm up to because I got a lot of things going on and I do a lot of really fun funny things and I review some other stuff too so check it out see you next time